just trying to, we're recording, so if you're opposed, be, you know. Um, we're trying to, to listen to the community and to our customers and understand uh, what people would find helpful right now, what people need and want. Uh, I, I talked a couple of weeks ago, we were saying, is it going to be too early humor? But I actually think any good time for humor. So we've got <laughs> some serious techniques uh, that we can do fun way. And um, it is again is ask me anything so we're gonna have Bridget just share a little bit about herself and her work and then it is in throughout to questions um, I have some things in case you're not quite sure what to ask but please jump in at any time uh, with that Bridget, can you tell a little bit about yourself and your improv background Yes. Thank you, Michaela. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here, everyone. I feel like I'm supposed to do a comedy set, which we could also do for like the next hour and then just like not get anything accomplished. I have to say that uh, you mentioned greeting. I have a whole set in one of my shows called Techlandia called The Greeting Game. And it's a game. I bring somebody up from the audience and they have to read my facial expression on a picture and trying to determine what my emotion is. And then I give them three options for what, why I might be feeling that emotion. <laughs> Anyways, it's treating the exact thing that you were just complaining about. It's, it's pretty funny. Um, my name is Bridget. I started doing improv in college, kind of. I took a course taught by a woman named Patricia Ma Ryan Madsen. I went to Stanford, which has this really strong improv culture. And this woman in particular is sort of the goddess of all things improv um, in the college setting. And we, we studied, I took this course where we just studied, we read all the books, and we went to shows and we discussed what we learned. We didn't get to do one game. She let us do like one game the whole time. So I really game to think about what was the actors were doing and what the mindset was it's really a mindset that allows people to in an instant on stage together create from nothing and have no idea basically what they're doing next um, which is pretty incredible when you think about it and that they go back and do it repeatedly is even more incredible willingly um, but what i always say is we are all natural improvisers you would not have made it onto this call dressed as well as you are. I can see from the, from the waist up. Um, choosing whether to wear pants or not, that was another decision you made. But we all have this natural creative flow. And actually, on every page of my website, one thing that I have at the bottom is I, I believe every person is a creative genius, which is a really heavy phrase for something like genius. Ooh, that sounds really like too much. But if you think about the definition of genius, it's really just an innate ability. It's like something you've had from birth. And I believe we all have this natural flow of ideas that are very unique to us. Also, it's another aspect of your creativity, in my opinion. We're all very, very creative, and we all have our own unique version of creativity and ideas coming to us all the time. I believe they're available to you in every moment, and they're appropriate for the moment. And so a lot of the work that I do when I get together with groups, a lot of times engineers, but more marketing sales, um, it's about trusting those instincts, trusting those ideas. And improv just happens to be a fantastic way to get guidelines and rules and games and activities that allow for that process to happen. And I'm part of a group called the Applied Improv Network. And what we do is talk about how to apply improv to pretty much everything you could possibly think of from teaching to medicine but um, in business it's um it's just a gold mine because confidence is appealing and it really boosts your confidence so i'll stop there but that's some of my thoughts there i haven't gotten any of the details but that's the overall that's the pitch that's great okay true story there were wasps in my backyard so <laughs> oh, oh, I, I yeah i got scared and i moved to the front uh, <laughs> so, uh, Bridget, you, you wanted to introduce this technique about saying yes and, which mm -hmm. I find really interesting because it's not only an improv technique, it's also a coaching technique that we oh. as executive coaches learn. It's sort of a methodology that helps people explore different options. But can you tell us about yes and, um, how that works in improv and how people might use it in real life? Yes, yes, and I will do that right now. Um, so yes, and first off, I want to say something which in HR you will appreciate, but um, the yes part does not mean actually agreement always. You know, it's like it isn't about saying yes to everyone and everything in a way of acquiescing or going along to get along at all. But what yes is, is I hear you. I acknowledge you. It is the opposite of ignoring, which is often, unfortunately, what happens to people sometimes in meetings or in situations where they don't have as much power, or it's a way of taking away people's power when you ignore. So yes is, 
I got it. I heard it. I'm with you. Like, you know, eye contact. And then and is now here's me. So a lot of times what I'll say is uh, build on it. The and part is build on it. So acknowledge and then build on it. And the beauty of the build on it part too is often forgotten because they think, oh yes, we have to be generous. We have to be generous. We have to go with this person's idea and give, give, give. Huh? What you have to do is say, I hear you and then filter it through yourself and give something back. And I actually do yes and stuff around um, and just improv stuff around networking. Because a lot of times in networking situations, we're told that we need to just ask people questions and be so interested in them and then just ask them. And you always say, so your kids play soccer. How often do they play soccer? Are they good at soccer? What's, well, you know, what's their shoe size? And people are like, ah, you know, you, you want to get a back and forth flow that feels natural. And it puts you into it in a way that feels very confident to people. And they like to hear from you. And if they don't, that's fine. There's people that don't want to hear from you. But a natural, healthy conversation has that seesaw back and forth or any interaction. So yes, as I hear you and and is and now here's me. And there's a myriad of ways to practice that, but I'll say that much. That's great. So in case people think that we forgot that there's a pandemic happening right now, we um, did want to coach the, conver coach the conversation in the here and now. Uh, people are feeling scared. They're feeling anxious. They're feeling uncertain, right? We, we all are at um, different degrees and at different times help us uh just help us think about that and what are some of the ideas and solutions or, or things that you've been experimenting with right now to just to help people out and help find some comfort absolutely so there's two things i'm just going to write a note to myself so i don't forget the first thing that comes to mind is um well because there, there's sort of two things happening you're aware that everyone else is freaked out and then you're also freaked out yourself right so there's this call to empathy and patience especially if you're a manager and you have a team um, and then there's also your own inner world. And so I'll, I'll start with the inner world stuff. Um, but there's the concept back to that creative flow that you have, right? That, that wealth of instincts and ideas that are a combination of everything. You can, you can go for hours on what that is. Doesn't matter. You have it. Um, and it's, it's gold to you because it's very specific to you and it will help guide you. And that's great for decision making. So listening to that and the concept is to yes and yourself. So you notice talked about yes anding someone else. How are you doing listening to yourself? Where are you at? Have you yesed the fact that you feel a little funky and you maybe just need to sit down for a minute and like be quiet? Or have you yesed the fact that you actually have a really fun idea for a new video series you would like to do? You've always wanted to do it. And gosh, you kind of have the time right now. And if you could just find a quiet moment, maybe you should try. Like, or, you know, I had this idea for the team so we could connect at a distance. Yes, and I'm going to try that on Tuesday. And I'm just going to do it for half an hour. Yes, and then I'll send out a survey and see how they liked it. And maybe also, yeah, I could add in, you know, Kyle, because Kyle always has great ideas and maybe he could do it with me whatever it is so it's like yes anding yourself right now is a really good practice for pushing back the anxiety and finding sweetness um coming from inside of you that has answers to the things because we're all feeling it in different ways some people are very financially scared right now others aren't you know some people have so much family around as Michaela's daughter apparently feels that they just want to scream so yes and I could go outside for a walk every night at five yes and I could wait for the sunset and do it again you know like there's ways it's you don't actually say yes and to yourself but the idea is allow that pattern to do well right within yourself and then empathy is the other end of this it was interesting I was talking to a contact friend at Microsoft and you know about what they're trying to do right now and they have pandemic leave which I think I'm okay to say which is to say like if you are stressed right now you can um, take time off and um, she was talking about empathy and the the goal of empathy between peers right now and particularly managers talking to the people on their teams and um, let's say this okay so I'm teaching a little bit more from the world of improv which is and on a stage at any time, everything is an offer, everything. And there's nothing you leave out. So if someone trips when they're coming on stage, that's an offer. You know, it's like, uh, Bob got the big shoes on again. Yeah, dude, but I love the big shoes. Well, you look good in the big shoes. You know, it's just like now that he tripped on stage, we're off talking about how he always wears big shoes because he feels cool. But the point is there is no nothing left out. OK, so I think a fundamental piece of that empathy is that acknowledgement that yes that i hear you right so just like all of it is welcome for starters that's yes and that is making the uh, except so if everything's an offer the other way it goes is, is the idea is you make offers there's two things happening on stage you make offers and you accept offers that's it that's all that's happening basically the whole time now a lot of times people are in the accepting mode right so they're looking around they're paying attention so make offers accept offers that's the fundamentals and make your partner look good 
So your goal is when they start throwing offers at you, at you, whatever it may be, even if they're standing there in silence because they just froze and they're freaking out, now you're suddenly both in cryo, but you can just barely talk. You know what I mean? Like you take that, that random thing and you make it an accepted thing. And, and when you build on that and you yes and and you yes and it, uh, suddenly you're going somewhere and it feels really good and your creativity is flowing. And, but it's a, it has to be a mindset of acceptance first. Yeah, I love that. And I, I think so many people in the midst of everything are also talking about what are the silver linings and what are the things we're doing well right now. A lot of it, and I think we're all uh, attempting to be more understanding, more patient, more humane, just because we all need a little bit more about that. But um, it reminded me, I keep, so speaking of walking, I've been walking a lot. I basically like work, cook, and walk in equal parts, I think. But I keep passing this one car in the neighborhood that has, um, you know, be patient, student driver uh, sticker on it. Yeah. And I keep thinking, can they just make one that says be patient, human driver? Yeah, like, right. We all deserve patience and empathy. And uh, I say that because I, I love the way you're describing this. And I, I also really hope this is something that people will bring back to work with them whenever this crisis is over. Yeah, it is an interesting situation in that, you know, there's all this division. I mean, this getting more deeper, but I mean, there is so much division, right? And it's really calling us to be more patient with ourselves and with others. It's it's painful, <laughs> you know, we're going to have, and it's not like, not like we have a dead end date. So there is a lot of having to just be like, okay, I'm going to work with this. It yeah. is a lot. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, one of the things that we practice at Reverb is um, inclusion, and we really talk about no matter what kind of work we're doing with a client, whether it's HR consulting, coaching, or leadership development, the goal is really creating healthy, inclusive cultures and healthy, inclusive workplaces. So share with us a little bit about how you see improv relating to inclusion. Right. So... I do think this is interesting and no one's ever let me talk about it. So thank you. <laughs> I, I was at a conference in Portland actually, where I was doing this for Chick Tech. If anyone's ever heard of Chick Tech, yeah. it's a wonderful organization. Yeah. So I led a, a session there at the, a conference and, and this one woman came up after me after the session and she said, I think you should do some DEI work with this. And I was sort of surprised. So she brought it up and I was like, oh, that's interesting. Um, and we talked about it and and then I listened to Michaela Ayers on, is that how I say her last name? Okay. Yeah. So I listened to her ask me anything. And, and one thing she said, I thought was so beautiful and profound and direct and simple, which was, you know, inclusion is about who's in and who's out, period. Like who's included and who's not included. And I was like, oh, wow, that's such a simple, beautiful way of summing it up. Because we all know that feeling of being left out. Um, so the beauty of improv, at least on the stage, when people are, are doing it right, it's, the goal is not to be funny. In improv the goal is to be alert to be paying attention to be looking for offers to be accepting them and to be trusting what you're bringing back so if everything is okay you know on improv stage there's no exclusion basically it is an exclusion free zone and um there's so many games that we could play in in the improv world that sort of force people if you are know, trick them into practicing inclusion because you never know what's coming at you when you're practicing improv. You have to, the, one of the great gifts of it is letting go of control and letting go of what you think is gonna happen and letting go of what you think is okay or normal and just letting the other person be themselves like profoundly, profoundly themselves. And, and then responding with yourself, you know? So there's a simplicity. I don't know if it's maybe exactly what the inclusion world needs, but I do think there's an aspect of it that could be brought in because of that hyper inclusion. It's hyper inclusive. Nice, nice. So I, I want to pause. I mean, we have some some other things that we wanted to talk about a little bit more about games and creativity and um, how you bring this into the workplace, how it can build trust in the workplace. But does anyone have a question or comment given where we are so far? And we really dove in and, and improv is not something that we <laughs> really think or talk about most days uh, in the workplace. So anyone have thoughts? You know, a phrase that we've been using around our offices a lot is assume positive intent. Mm -hmm. uh, if your coworker was never rude to you before COVID, <laughs> chances are they did not intend for their email to be rude today. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so we've been working a lot with that one. Um, and honestly, 
I did a lot of improv in high school, so this is really bringing me back. This is fun, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love that. And yeah, assume positive intent is such a good one. And you're right, especially now where to the extent that we're seeing any um, behaviors that are different than they were in the past is it's also a way to help us understand where some people may be affected more or differently than what's going on and potentially also to reach out and check in with them. Right. That was something we talked about when we were talking earlier about uh, anxiety on a previous conversation and just you, we don't really know who might be predisposed to have more anxiety or might be in a more difficult personal situation under home quarantine, but um, the behavior is the thing to watch for. And if someone's behavior is either different than their typical behavior or they're just having an outsized reaction to um, check in with them, right? It doesn't matter what their personal situation is. You might just notice that they need a little bit of extra support. Um, I did not take improv, but I did go to uh, the Northwest High School, which included arts, and we had to take all uh, different parts of the arts curriculum. And I was extremely shy and quiet as a kid, including high school, and my best friend was even more shy and more quiet than I was. And we were supposed to be doing a scene together, and we were not um, loud enough. And so the teacher kept making us, he would say, stand three times further apart, three times further apart. Oh, and I, I, we were laughing until we were crying, but we didn't get any pr better at projecting. So <laughs> that, was, uh, that was my experience with acting. Memorable. <laughs> and Michaela, I think, does Mary, do you have a question? Do you see? Yeah, I do. Can oh, you hear me? Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of specific. So if, just redirect me if it's too specific, but um, Bridget told me to come with questions. So here we are. Um, so this, so we, speaking of equity work, this is actually the area that to me is sort of the hardest to navigate in this new world that we're in indefinitely. So our organization has been doing, um, we have an equity team that's been active for almost two years. And um, we were trying this year to go it alone without a, a facilitator sort of holding our hand. And since this all went down, I just am totally stumped as to how we can possibly continue the work through over what seems like such a divide, um, just physically not being in the same space. It's yeah. like the work is hard enough to do and hard enough to dig into when you're in the same room. And I, I just can't figure out how to guide my team to, to take it up again. And it's so important. And I don't know, I don't want to let it go, but I, I don't know how to keep it going. So that's, that's what I'm really grappling with, one of the things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm curious, um, just to understand a little bit more, if you were together, what is the next thing you'd be doing or what is the next topic you'd be addressing, do you know? Yeah, so we have a, I mean, a staff team that um, spans both our administrative staff and our event staff. I, I work at Town Hall Seattle. And um, so we have been reading, um, white agility together. We've been reading how to be an anti-racist, anti-racist. Um, and we have month or had monthly full group meetings. And then every of a, uh, about every two weeks, we had um, meetings with our smaller uh, sort of subcommittees within the, the group. So each committee, one was working on policy stuff and one was working on um, um, kind of program stuff. And so we were just all sort of working on our own projects alongside reading this, you know, doing these readings together. So um, it's exacerbated by the fact that our event staff is basically laid off because we don't have any work. Um, and so they're not really working and admin staff is working and it just feels very, but and this is an example of something. I'm sure you all have examples of things in your work that are just kind of stuck or stalled. Um, and it's so hard to know how to kind of leap over the gap and be more authentically together on a screen together. So yeah. I don't know exactly what my question is, but help. That's all right. <laughs> well, I have a couple of thoughts and then I'll turn it over to Bridget. And, you know, some of this, I think people, it was new two weeks ago or three weeks ago, and now everyone's doing the virtual, you know, whether it's a virtual gathering or um, virtual happy hour and things like that, just surely to connect. I have seen some um, book groups move to virtual book group and where people were really well 
connected. And so even though they used to you know, do that over a meal, they're still keeping up with the books and the discussions. And then there's really ad hoc things that have come up. Like I know one day, uh, my team's gonna laugh, but one day someone shared like a beautiful picture of their plant, either their house plant or something in the garden. And then everyone just ended up like sending photographs and then someone shared, oh, here's this shelf I have with some plants and other mementos and here's what it means to me. Like it just ended up being this great kind of um, conversation starter, I guess. And then I have a very opposite view. My husband is a preschool teacher. And so he has literally been on Zoom calls with two and three-year-olds and trying to figure out how the, you know, if you think adults are unruly. Um, I have a three-year-old. You know, but yeah. um, like one day he just gave them a tour of the garden. You know, he walked around and then he was actually going to introduce them to all of us, except me and my kids were all uh, working. <laughs> but I mean, even just kind of fun and informal and, um, you know, things that might not have been that interesting previously. But the, the other thing I really hear from people is just the intimacy and connection that does get formed when we're seeing each other in our homes with our kids, with our pets. And so, um, you know, we used to kind of hide those things, but how can we almost capitalize on them now to get to know each other better? Because that's, that's the reality. I was on a, just a call with a friend yesterday, but uh, both parents work, they have two kids. And she just said, yeah, like my son has been on so many Zoom calls. And she's like, I just introduce him. I'm like, this is my son. And don't worry about confidentiality because he doesn't understand what we're talking about. He's three. But, um, and she said, it was really interesting because she said, you know, and I've stopped apologizing. And I was like, yeah, good for you, right? We don't have to apologize for having kids present. But what, what do you have, Bridget? See, I'm, I'm really like practical and then I can get really serious, but I bet Bridget has <laughs> some really fun ideas. Well, no, I mean, this is, yeah, this is exactly what I'm constructing stuff around right now, basically, because, uh, well, okay, so I'll say this first. I am not a, D, a diversity, equity, and inclusion specialist by any stretch. And so regarding the book club and the discussions, that wouldn't be um, something I could speak to, but I will speak to this part of it from the perspective that I have and the work I've been doing, which is that to, if you go back to where I started, which is everyone is a creative genius, like I come from that perspective, and really improv comes from the expectation that everyone has the ability to contribute. Everyone has something beautiful inside them that is appropriate in there for a reason in the moment. So, so every activity, whether it is online and there are gazillions basically of ways to play together online we'll get into some of those but they all involve sharing and they all involve what what was my friend deborah said about um you know assume positive intent or in essence assume greatness inside truly like assume that everyone um will bring it you know basically and if they can't or if they struggle then you there's ways of assisting or those but the thing the thing that i've been doing is creating online experiences that are simple, basically. Simplicity is, is number one. Everything happens slower. Um, everybody's gonna be a little slow in the chat or they gotta get on and off mute or like gonna put them in chat rooms and they come back from the chat room. So I've, what happens in an hour is much less for me, but the idea is, well, we should get into some games, but um, maybe I should, I just think I should, I should start with one right now. But, but the idea is all the games offer the opportunity for everyone to contribute in a creative way together and build something together and it's fun and that's like all i can say from my end <laughs> and it's affirming of everyone's worth and worthiness and part of whatever is you know still very much intact even though people aren't together and also laughing and having fun is just so needed and it's really really missing right now you know excuse me <laughs> i'm still i'm still stuck on everyone is a creative genius um I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to own that one day. Well, it's fun in my sessions because I just, I just, as I like to joke, I mess with people till they believe me. You know, I just, I throw things at them and then I keep reminded, just look what you did. This didn't exist a minute ago. You guys just all created this. Now we're all in Tahiti with, you know, Martians having cocktails at our mansion. You know, because we have all these games where we plan parties or vacations and it's a group and people go to the most outrageous places. Um, and we can talk about that game later, but you're constantly creating stuff that never existed before. You always are. Well, it feels like we should we should dive in and talk about games. All right, let's talk about games. What a fun idea. I wrote so I have my here on my phone because I'm not a double screener. This is my other screen. All right. 
So here's a fun one. This one's called Port Key. My friend Matt Smith, he's here in Seattle. If you've ever heard of him, he's an actor um, and improv teacher. Great guy. So Port Key is a storytelling game. It's very simple, but it does have an element of improv because you're listening for what the person before you is saying, and that's going to influence you. So it's a pass, in essence, passing a story in a circle. It always is yummy, basically, for people. In person, it's even better. So I'll tell you, on, on a screen, basically, what you would do is you would need to figure out an order of some kind. You could put it in the chat. Um, sometimes what you can do before a meeting, if well, there's games I've done, is you give everybody a number, which maybe sounds awful. It depends on how many people. But if you have a smaller group, five, six, just be like, hey, here's in the chat. This is our order. So let's say, you know, I'm the first one. What I would do if I was the facilitator is I would say, you often just see this improv sessions. Um, let's start with a suggestion. So what I'll do is I'll say, you know, marshmallows, go, right? So the first person's job is to tell a small, small, and I'm talking small, story from their life, their personal life, that we are not in imagination land, about marshmallows, or where marshmallow takes them, okay? So the first thing you say is marshmallows take me to. That is exact phrasing every time. Marshmallows take, or something takes me to. So in my case, I would say maybe, okay, marshmallows takes me to CYO camp when I was eight, and I really struggled to get that marshmallow in that sweet spot between totally not cooked and just completely burned because I would get so excited and jam it in the fire, right? So that's, okay, so there's my story. That's it. That's all I share. But now you know a little bit more about me, right? CYO camp, Catholic kid, you know, like eight, went to camp, whatever, you know, it's a little, so then next person would pick up another word in that, that I said, fire. Fire takes me, that's kind of scary, let's say, but it's, it's fine, fire. Fire takes me to how wonderful it feels when I go skiing with my family every winter up at Whistler and we always end up around the fire at the end of the night and my son, my husband plays guitar and, and we sing together. And then the next person says, guitar. Guitar takes me to last night. I went to this great open mic and this person played the song that brought me to tears and I totally didn't expect it, but it was about you know their child and I related. Child, child, do you get what I'm doing there? So it's one, so the person, every person has to sit and listen and enjoy what they're listening to, which is an improv skill. You know, you know you're up next, if you will, but you still, and this is also about interacting with people you are around, right? To really listen first, okay? And so then you pick one word and you tell a story and it's magical. It's magical. It is a lot of fun. It is very bonding for people. So um, that's Porky. Does anybody have any questions about that or things they'd like to ask? No? Okay. Okay, should we do another one or? Yeah. Okay. I'm seeing nodding. Okay. This, this is another game from the improv world that uh, works also online. So I call it, let's go on adventure. My friend, Matt Smith calls it um, vacation. There's lots of ways to do it. This is a pure, pure yes. And game. So the first person says the facilitator, let's go on an adventure. And here in this case, you would, you would um, want to have, I think a flow. So people know who's next, if you will. Okay. So let's go on adventure. So the first person says that second person, yes. And we will go to Italy. That's all they get, right? They're not planning the whole thing. They're offering one thing at a time. That is the beauty often of these things. You have to manage yourself because there's the extroverts that want to plan a whole adventure and the other people need time to get in. So let's go on adventure. Yes, and we'll go to Italy. Yes, and we will wear really cute swimsuits on the beach. Yes, and we will eat fabulous piles of seafood pasta. Yes, and we will make friends with people visiting Italy from all around the world. Yes, and we will especially like the people who are there from, I don't know, let's say Japan. Yes, and they will invite us to Japan and we will fly back with them. I mean, this is obviously not COVID. Um, and we will we will move into their palace in Tokyo. Yes, and in their palace in Tokyo, we'll each have our own fabulous room and five servants. Yes, I mean, you can do whatever you want, but the point is, the idea is you make it funner and funner and crazier and crazier, and everybody's gonna do it in their own way. So you're gonna be like ready to go to the palace in Tokyo and someone else is gonna take it somewhere you did not expect, and you just gotta listen, you gotta drop your control, enjoy them, wait for your turn and add it in again. And it's really magical what happens. Um, and there's also an element of positivity. I wanna emphasize that. I do this, so, so my workshops, I mean, they're improv workshops, but I was a marketing director, I worked in tech, startups for 14 years, like I get it where people are at and it's not really theater class. Like everything I'm doing is coming back to and how does that relate to you know your work? So um, something like this, what I think it relates to is being ready and contributing, listening and also letting go of control when it's not your turn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. And I, I know we have one on the call who works with uh, a lot of introverted 
engineers, like some work environments can be more you know, intense and more serious. How do you suggest that people introduce this whole element of fun and games and creativity, especially if people are a little uh, cynical or resistant to yeah. Well, it's, I mean, that's the thing that I, I, I'm just gonna be real. I, I can do and I do nicely when I lead is I sneak people into this space, right? Because you do have to, it's not unlike starting a comedy set, you know, you got to warm up the crowd a little bit, you can't go in hot when they're cold. So, um, but what I what I do is I, I, and you can do this, you can say, Hey, guys, I just listened to this cool thing on online. And the gal there was talking about how everyone's a creative genius, which I know is kind of uncomfortable. By the way, I just published a book on Amazon, very short, oh, if you want to check it out. I just went live today. It's called Up Your Genius, which I thought was going to Up Your Genius. No, Up Your Genius, a book designed, a workbook designed to make you believe you are creative. It's it's everything I'm telling you very quickly. It's like in 26, 25 pages, I think, and you can read in like 20 minutes. But the idea is I often start with or what you could say to them is like, let's let's do a mindset switch okay like let's try and think like improvisers for the next like 15 minutes because i just is so the main pieces are you know everything's an offer everyone's a creative genius um every like uh, we're all gonna listen for everyone and i'll tell you a couple more things actually i do to warm people up but but you know those two at a minimum you know everything's an offer uh, we're accepting all offers here and everyone's a creative genius and um you can jokingly, I like to call it structured fun. We're going to do some structured fun. So it's a safe box, but the design is we get to kind of play within this safe box. Because a lot of times people like to know it's not going to like spin out and last for hours. And, you know, I've got a five minute game for you. Okay, we're going to spend five minutes playing right now. I want everybody to drop everything else and trust yourself, trust everyone around you and um, let whatever comes out, comes out. So there's here's some of my warm up rules also. I'm just going to continue if you don't mind. So backing up to how I warm up a group. Um, one of my other things, celebrate failure. Uh, well, so here's what I say. I said, I have rules, all right? Improv, by the way, is full of guidelines for everything you could ever want to do socially in your life. And I, I mentioned that to people. So we explore three of them. But before I say that, one of my rules is be average. I am begging you to bore me with your lame ideas. I want the first one that comes up and I guarantee you it is not lame, it's perfect. So, um, be average. Like I like to joke, I know you got to be plus in high school Spanish, but I need you to like chill out on the on the achievement orientation. And then celebrate failure is the idea that there is no failure. But if you feel like you failed, like this is failure free space, um, you can you can take a bow, which is something that's more fun physically. But you could just have people throw their hands up in the air, like woo, you know, like. But there's the circus bow, which is up to the right to the you know smile at the crowd, dip down, come back up, yay, you know, um, which is really fun to do physically when you're um, in a group. So be average, celebrate failure. These are concepts that can go along with these games. Today we're going to play around with the game, and I want you to be average. You know, I want you to give me your first thought. Don't think is the last one. Just please don't think. Just let it out. Um, it's very, it's affirming. It feels good. There's some more concepts I could come over, but I'll, I'll I could go over, but I'll pause there because I know I've been going on a while. That's great. I'm curious if anyone else has questions about games before we move on. Let me see what other game I have here. Oh, me, the talkative one again. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not so judging. I'm um, having the really quiet engineer. So I had the pleasure of taking over human resources of my organization about 20 days before COVID happened. So I didn't even really get to know them. <laughs> um, and then along with that, our average tenure is 15 years. Mm. Um, people stay there forever. There's, we have um, two people in our accounting department that have been with the company for 25 years. Um, and so they don't see always the need to kind of keep this going because they know each other really well. But on the other side, I'm seeing, as I mentioned earlier, the stressors and the things coming out and people's feelings getting hurt, communication issues. So do you have a recommendation on how to help them see the benefit of doing some of these things? Yeah, I didn't really address that. I'm glad you said that because I didn't really address the engineer question, which I certainly, um, I'm familiar because I worked around them for many years. It is, I, I would say, the one thing I definitely do, because I have done groups of engineers working with them, um, I definitely shift my ex expectations massively, to be honest. Like a sales team is going to gobble this up and be high as a kite by the end of it. Engineers in general are, one thing that's fascinating is their creativity bends very differently. They tend to go to a lot of sci-fi. 
you know, with their ideas, a lot more imaginative and like unusual, not like non-human robot sort of stuff, which I love. But I think, so I'll, I'm going to sit way back and sit in engineer energy and say, if your goal is to get engineers, you basically want them to take a little time online to play. Is that what I'm hearing? Like to connect? Yeah. Okay. I think, th I mean, I think the storytelling one could work and what I would say, and or the let's go on an adventure. The other one I had handy and let me see. Some of them uh, might be a little too complicated, even though they're not, but to get through online, I'm just going to check my list really quick. Yeah, I think, I mean, I do think a version of that port key could really work in that it's just, it's just fun team bonding and, you know, say like, hey, you know, we're going to need in just one lesson in it. The one lesson I want to get across is we're all going to take the time to listen to the person telling the story so that we hit it. We, we are able to, to follow on and make sure you keep them short out of respect for everybody. Like those, I would simplify what you want out of them from it, you know, and keep it really simple. Let's go on an adventure. It could be real interesting with them. <laughs> it could be. Where would they go? I bet you it's outer space. By the time you're done, you would not be on yeah. earth. I bet that's true. So, but again, I think some simple instructions and in making it brief um, okay. and trying it would be my first instincts. And if you want to talk more after this specifically about what you're working, I'm happy to, um, Think more about how many people is it? Um, we have about 120 um, in the U.S. Um, I'm not doing our Mexico facility. They're an entirely different culture that I don't understand. Um, I'll learn it, but I think it would be disrespectful yeah. at this point. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, about 120, and most of them are either in um, we sell in data center spaces. So we do all the connectivity and telecommunications, and so. It's a lot of product development, mechanical engineers, um, those types. And so I'm I'm learning them and they're learning me because they oh, weren't yeah. expecting a social butterfly to enter the office. <laughs> well, and you might overwhelm them if you bring them this, let's be honest, right away, right. like not knowing. Them. No, I kind of want to ease them into it. We're starting yeah. out with just send us pictures of your home office. And then next week, it's send a picture of your new coworker. So we're kind of easing. <laughs> And Michaela, I don't mean to talk over you. Go ahead if you want to jump in. Oh, you're you're great. I lo I love the ideas and I love the um, caution of easing in. I was also thinking, you know, when you're new, you you kind of get to play the new person card, right? Like, you know, this is something that would have worked really well. Or I obviously are kind of hey, you know, humor me, right? Like, I don't know. There's something you're only, you're only new once, right? To each company's using that. Um, the other thing I found, this isn't as sort of engineer specific as it is, you know, specific to, to uh, trying out something that's different for people. But in my past, found, you know, call it a pilot or call it an experiment, right? Like, I just want to do an experiment today and see if this helps us connect. And then I think people just, um, it alters their expectation. It kind of opens them up, just like what you were saying about we're not going to do this for, you know, all day. Like, just putting that slightly different boundary around it can really make people more open to a new experience. And if I may, I just have one more, you know, game, if you will, that translates well. Um, with sales teams, a lot of times they have to quote, handle objections, right? They have the whole trainings around objections handling. Well, everybody has to handle objections in every job, right? You're dealing with people and they're not always on board with what you're doing or not understanding it. So I do think there's room, and, and so I'll just tell you this. So one thing we'll do sometimes with sales teams, because that yes and forces positivity. I also did this real estate agents recently. I'm starting to work with Windermere real estate agents. And they handle you like, well, I think the HOAs are a little high. Or like, I don't really know if I want to live in the city. What if I don't have a lawn? How, you know, like they have different objections. So I feel like within engineering, I'm just going to put this out there as an idea. You do a yet, you, you, you handle things when people kind of grump on you. So we do. So somebody gets the fun of saying, yeah, I don't think our new data equipment works very good, you know, and the person has to play the game of yes, and we have a plan for that or yes, and we're meeting on that tomorrow. Would you like to join? Yes. And you know what I mean? It's like there is a um, yes, ending an objection practice can be really both hilarious and productive. I'll just put it out there. It's another one to put in the back pocket and it can be quick. I love that. Okay. Okay. My brain a lot of places, but I'm going to keep it here right now. Um, so talk about how this builds trust. I know this, this is really a highlight of your work. And so how do these kind of activities, how does, you know, really having fun and stepping out of the, the grind, um, how does that help teams, especially with trust and just camaraderie? Yeah, I think what happens a lot of times, it was also in the framing of it. So 
what I do when I frame it is I'm, I constantly refer back to that. Everyone is a creative genius. Look at what you guys have done. Did you notice what you just did there? Do you look what you did together? You guys came up with that together, didn't you? You know, there's a lot of that kind of affirm it, affirm it, affirm it. Um, so in any of these moments where you can acknowledge and appreciate the fact that people created something together and affirm and remind them that, you know, on this team, in this organization, we believe that everyone you know, has something valuable to offer, gosh darn it. And we're going to look at everyone that way. And that's just what we're going to do. You know what I mean? And you can, you can, you know, complain and you can work on things in ways that are difficult, whatever, but at, at a minimum, um, it's just like, it's a mindset, I guess is the best way I can describe it. And the, the advantage of a full um, session is I take, so, so so the three principles I tend to focus on, for example, in my um, sessions, we covered two of them yes and which i translate to build on it in a business setting and then treat your partner like a treat or uh, make your partner look good which is a beautiful beautiful notion right when you're up on stage you don't like look at your shoes and what you're wearing in the lights and think like oh my god who is ah uh-huh. you are you are alert to everyone around you and you're looking for opportunities to help out basically so make your partner look good. i translate that to treat them like a genius assume good intent to deborah's point the other one that i haven't covered yet is over acceptance so this is a really fun one and Anybody remember Chris Farley, you know, in a van down by the river, great comedian. Okay, so the book that I'm referring to in a lot of my work, by the way, is called Truth in Comedy. And it's from the Chicago School of Improv, Improv Olympic, Adele Close, those guys. And they um, they have put out this book about the Herald, which is an improv format that is long form. So you have multiple storylines going, people play multiple characters. It goes on for an hour. Like it's very complicated, high level stuff, not intended to be funny. It's intended to be magical, right? Like people are creating together. Over acceptance is taking something small. And this is something refers back to we talked to with the with the uh, inclusion, take something small and blowing it up, really noticing the quiet voice, for example. People love to be acknowledged. That goes back to trust. But over acceptance is not only acknowledging it, but boom. So my joke example of, of Chris Farley is if you offered Chris a beer, this is Chris over acceptance. Beer, I love beer. I'm going to drink 50 beers, crush every can on my head, and make a statue of you. Right? Like that is over acceptance. All you did was offer the guy a beer, and now he's got a beer can statue art creation that he is going to take around the world and fundraise for who knows what. You know what I mean? Like, um, so over acceptance, there's, there's gains around that, you know, um, taking something on one, the, it's called hype man is the main one that I do, but the idea is a hype, a hype person. What is their job? It is to amp up whatever that celebrity just said. The whole goal is like, he didn't eat a sandwich. He ate the biggest sandwich you've ever seen. And it was flown in by doves from Tunisia. You know what I mean? Like you hype things, you make them bigger. So we practice that in, in a game format. That's really, really fun. We have a hype man, a celebrity and a reporter, and they have to get through this prep for this article together. But the idea is like over acceptance is a very trust building thing, but then you tie it right back to their work. So I guess in this case, that mindset piece of everyone matters and we're going to make an an effort to find that in them you know and every game affirms it whatever game you pick of these nice i love it so it really creates an equal playing field where people can show up as their uh, best average self aka genius yeah while having fun and then bring those concepts back to work yeah. And it's like, it works every time. That's the magic of it. I've done it with accountants, hospital inspectors was my toughest group. I will tell you. Um, and they all break, they all give in cause everybody's got it in them. Yeah. And the Kayla's got visitors. I love it. Um, yeah. So it's beautiful. It's, uh, it just, it changes. And it was interesting actually after Windermere, the guy called, called me up and he goes, do you realize your message is kind of political? And I was like, in what sense? And he's like, well, you know, it's a lot of egalitarian thinking. You know, it's a lot of everyone matters. There's not a lot of hierarchy. There's zero hierarchy on an improv stage. There should be zero. So yeah, that's a lot of trust then that you'll be acknowledged and matter. I think I saw a hand raise. No? Yeah. I was, I was just going to mention that I've taken improv last year just for fun yeah um, for you. and I just wanted to kind of give you my experience because that exactly what you're talking about with the when you're talking about the inclusion um you know it's not about like oh I'm the person or you just kind of like work with them and you have to let go completely because I have my in my head this whole story and I say something and somebody else gives me something else and you're like that's not but then you have to just go with it 
And sometimes you just don't think of something or whatever, but you, so like that failure, like being okay to fail, everybody was just like, it's fine. It's not a big deal. And you just keep going on or you just laugh about it and it's just really safe. And that was, that's the one thing that I think is really um, powerful about improv. It's just like, you're safe with everybody and it should be yeah. because if it's not, then it's scary. It's really scary. Yes. So I think that's a good thing. Like maybe as HR people to think about that's where a lot of people are coming from. They're scared and it's like, you have to make this place safe for them and under make them understand like, it's okay. You know, whatever you're saying, whatever you're thinking is, is important. Um, so that was kind of a, a powerful thing and kind of what you were saying, you know, resonated with me that, that feeling that I had. <laughs> Beautiful. I say everyone should take an improv course. I think it's the answer to world peace. And I mean it with all my heart. I'm not joking. It really is powerful. It changes people. I think if before peace negotiations, they had to do improv, they'd be different negotiations. By the way, Gail, I was laughing to myself when you're talking about, and then you just fail. I was going to say, that's what this is for. That's end scene. <laughs> it's, we're done. That didn't work out. We're going to just, we're going to start over. <laughs> we're done. Um, if I may, listen, Gail, two things I haven't mentioned. Yes, but. So we've talked about yes and. Yes, but is a fun one in the workplace. People use it all the time. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. You know, like, oh, no, we, yeah, well, mm, we could do that, but our insurance policy doesn't cover that. So we're just going to say no. You know, like that kind of, the beauty of yes and is it makes people feel like they're being heard more, you know. Yes, but it's necessary at certain points. Like, yeah, we really, nope, we can't, you know. But you can usually find a way to yes and almost anything. Yes, and I think that's something we consider if we twist it just a little bit. Or yes, and maybe go talk to so-and-so because I know they have some resources that we're not using that might be able to help you with that. You know, there's almost always a way to yes and, and people love the feeling of being yes and it. feel like a million dollars. Another thing is called blocking. Gail, do you remember blocking that concept? No, I'm going to start pinging Gail. She'll be like, no, it was one class. Leave me alone. Um, blocking is the concept. It's basically a, a hard ignore. So if you're up on stage and it's a great way to get a laugh and it's a great way to gain power. So blocking is basically, I didn't hear you. So for example, if I came on stage and I said, Oh, hey, um, I, you know, I, Michaela, I love your yellow hat. And Michaela was like, I'm not wearing a hat. It's kind of, it, it would be funny. She would get a laugh, like the crowd would like it for like a second. And then she and I would be stuck because now I have to recover. It's like, oh no, no, it's the invisible potion I took and I'm the only one that can see it. I'm wearing one too. You know, like now we've got a scrape because Michaela's not playing with me. She didn't, yes, sorry, Michaela. <laughs> but the point is like, that that's called a block. People block all the time. People block in meetings like crazy. So another beautiful thing, and this is, again, it's, you know, I hate to say it's not for you guys to teach exactly because you might get attacked where someone like me can come up and really like teach people about blocking. And, and they often, one woman came up to me after a speech I gave in October and she said, oh, you're a marriage therapist. And I was like, I am. She goes, I block my husband constantly. And I, you just like put it in my face, like, thank you. You know, but I didn't obviously, but she was being funny, but she's like, yeah, blocking, it's powerful, it's, it works. Um, so, you know, not blocking is one of the rules, don't block is one of the rules of improv. And it kind of goes back to that trust piece that Gail was describing. So yes, but a way to take control, blocking, ways to take control. And both of them are diminishing to others. So, yeah. Well, that's to think about. <laughs> I know, sorry, I'm giving I'm you a lot. I'm not even gonna go into the block. Um, I know we have a few more minutes and Bridget, what are the one or two best ways for people to find you if they either want to learn more or um, can they see you? Do you have a video or anything that we can share the link to? Yeah, I mean, my, I'm the only Bridget Quigg on the internet, except for some Irish women who didn't make it to the U.S. back in the 1850s, unfortunately for them. No, there's really not many of us. So if you go to BridgetQuigg.com, it is me. I'm Bridget Quigg everywhere. Um, and I, ha I have a YouTube channel. I'm just starting to create, and I had not published any of them yet, um, short videos about this theory, because this, this stuff that I'm doing, because I'm basically being asked to. Um, and that's good, because I needed to do it. In fact, today after this call, I might sit and do a few of my new Target sweatshirt. Um, so, but I'm on YouTube, and I'm, I'm on, you can sign up for my newsletter. It's very infrequent, but it does happen. Um, I have things going on a lot of the time, um, monthly. And... I'm also just, you know, on email, Bridget at BridgetQuig.com. Just write me. Um, I'd right. love to connect with any of you. LinkedIn, awesome. let's link. I would love to link on LinkedIn. All right. You're everywhere. So LinkedIn, start YouTube, email, and um, we can buy your book on Amazon. 
Yes, I would right? love it. It's very short. You can, uh, Mary, you had a question, yeah? Well, I just wanted to say thank you for the term structured fun because I had a manager years ago who used the term forced fun, which yeah, uh -huh. like really, it, it's like, poison spoiling my heart and it, it's <laughs> it's always been you know floating around for me like i don't want to make yeah. my have forced no. fun so i'm just gonna let that go and think and i love it it's if really I made it very briefly too um beyond that one of the things in improv also that's a theory of creativity as well which is the more const constrictions you put on people the more creative they get okay so you have to only use your left hand for the whole scene and you speak in a british accent go it's like oh Hey, you know what I mean? Like people, and they just do the craziest stuff because it's structured fun. So structured fun is great for people. Yeah, good, Mary. Yay. Thank you. Thank you for that. So we have a few Reverb staff folks on the phone, and tomorrow they will know why they're using and speaking in British accents. Because <laughs> I told her to. <laughs> I can't do either, by the way, so it's not going to last long. All right, well, um, are there any final questions before we thank Bridget and send her off to do her videos? <laughs> That's right. I'm liking really nice face. to see all your faces. Thank you. Yeah, and thanks, uh, thanks everyone just um, for joining us, for being social, for playing along. And um, I have seen Bridget in action. She hosted an event with us a couple of years ago at Startup Week. It was amazing. And actually, it was mostly folks, and she had them up and laughing and running around. She was sitting on a chair. So um, <laughs> I won't share, but like it, it was really amazing. And I actually wish that she had kicked off every session that week and, and brought that energy. Nice so, time. yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Bridget. And um, we will be doing more of these. So please watch out for them. Also, let us know if there are things that you want to learn about or hear about. You can. Um, on LinkedIn as well, or shoot us a note, info at Reverb People. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Enjoy the sunshine. Bye. Bye-bye.